إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره الحمد لله أتم النعمة على الأمة وأكمل لها دينها وكمل بمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم مكارم الأخلاق كلها الحمد لله قد عم الخلائق رأفة وحمانا سبحانه تجري الرياح بأمره فتنبت الأرض أشجارا وأغصانا وبحار بطري اللحم زاخرة وأخرى تفيض عذبا لسقيانا وشمس تجود بالدفء ما بقيت الدنيا وما بخلت قرونا وأزمانا خلقنا من منية خلقت فكانت الأرحام مأوانا غذينا من غير جهد ومسألة فتكامل الخلق صورا وألوانا نحب وعين الله تكلؤنا والأب يسعى والأم ترعانا حتى إذا القوى فينا قد اكتملت كثرت معاصينا وعظمت خطايانا نسينا كيف كان منشأنا فكيف نسه عن الذي بفضله أبقانا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له كل الطبيب تخطفته يد الردى يا طبيب من بالمنايا دهاك بل اسأل الأعمى خطا في الزحام بلا اصطدام من يقود خطاك واسال بطون النحل تقاطرت شهدا وكل الشهد من حلاك بل اسال اللبن المصفى من بيت فرث ودم من الذي صفاك واذا رايت النخل مشقوقا نوى فساله يا نخل من شق نواك سيجيبك من في الكون الله الله لله في الآفاق آيات لعل أقلها هو ما إليه هداك ولعل ما في الكون من آيات إذا حاولت تفسيرا لها أعياك وأشهد أن سيدنا وإمامنا وقائدنا وحبيبنا رسول رب العالمين صفوة خلق الله أجمعين هو النبي لا كذب هو ابن عبد المطلب رسول الله محمد صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر وألها وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين All praises due to Allah Peace and the blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are bear witness that there is no God worthy of our worship, our submission, our true love, our sincerity except Allah. I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. We are sending our blessings and our salutations, our prayers to all the prophets and the messengers of Allah as we believe in all of them without any distinction. We send our blessings and our salutations to Adam, to Abraham, to Noah, to Moses, to Jesus, to all the prophets and the messengers of Allah, to Joseph, to Aaron, to all the prophets and the messengers of Allah, till we reach to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome back to another Jum'ah, another time, another Eid, another gathering, another celebration when we come together as one family, as one community, as one body, as one ummah, to worship Allah alone without associating partners with Him. But 
as a matter of fact, I wanted to share these moments with all of you to talk about one of the attributes and the names of Allah that Muslims should wonder about, should reflect upon. We worship Allah, the one who introduced himself as the most compassionate, as the most merciful. We recite in the Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful. Some people, sometimes, they misunderstood the nature of Allah. And they failed to explain who is Allah. And sometimes, they introduce Allah in a way that Allah Himself didn't accept for Himself to be introduced well. We worship Allah, the one who is extremely merciful, the one who is so gracious that He introduced Himself as a Rahman al Rahim. So we worship Allah with that mercy. Based on the mercy of Allah, which is so vast, some people undermining the mercy of Allah. And subhanAllah, they put themselves to be judging people, even more than Allah. And they try to minimize the mercy of Allah. And they, as if they put themselves in charge to run the universe, to judge the creation of Allah. Let me share with you some of the Quranic verses where Allah is talking about Himself. When He says, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ My mercy had encompassed everything. The mercy of Allah is so vast. Allah, when He created the creation in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Allah created heavens and earth, the same day He created heavens and earth, He, he subhanahu wa ta'ala had made hundred portions of His mercy. He sent down to the earth one portion and He kept for himself, 99 of the portions of the mercy of Allah. We only have one portion of His mercy on earth. And this one portion that we can see amongst each other, this one portion that you can see in a mother to her child, in a father to his children, even that portion applies for the animals. You see the animals are showing mercy to one another. They have kind of mercy. Cows, goats, cats, dogs, animals having mercy. And do not wonder when you see recently some of the videos on YouTube about subhanAllah, like a wolf had seen a baby deer. And the wolf mother 
Shower that dear baby with the mercy. She didn't consume him. She didn't eat him. But she protected. That's against the nature. You ask yourself, what made that animal to do so? It is the mercy. The mercy that Allah had implanted in our hearts. Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ لَا يَرْحَمْ لَا يُرْحَمْ The one who does not show mercy, he would not give him the mercy of Allah on the day of judgment. But you know what? Allah's mercy is so vast. It encompasses everything. So we Muslims, we do not worship a God who introduced himself as angry God or wanted to punish us or wanted to crush us. No. We worship Allah, the one who always introducing himself by that attribute, his mercy. <laughs> Let me give you some examples. Allah, by his mercy, he will never allow anyone to enter Jannah except through his mercy. Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَنْ يَدْخُلَ أَحَدُكُمُ الْجَنَّةَ بِعَمَلٍ None of you will enter Jannah just because of his good deeds. They said, even you, Ya Rasulullah, you will not enter Jannah just because of your deeds. He said, even me, Except that if Allah had showered me with His mercy, then He would allow me to be admitted to Jannah. That's actually has to make us to reflect upon this reality. The mercy of Allah, His mercy is so vast. Sometimes amongst the brothers, when they see a brother who committed a sin, they may give him the final verdict. Oh brother, you did that, you did that, you disobeyed Allah, you will be in the hellfire. As if Allah had given them the keys of the hellfire. So how come? You judge people and tell that so and so will be in the hellfire. Based on what? Are you the one who created Jannah or the hellfire? Are you the one who created them? Listen to the mercy of Allah. Listen to the verse which has the manifestation of the mercy of Allah. Allah said, مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ Whoever committed a good deed فَلَهُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا Whoever committed a good deed he will be rewarded multiplied by ten. Why Allah is doing this? Because He is the most gracious and the most merciful. So Imam, what about if I intended good, but I was unable to do this, still you will be rewarded. What if I have done a bad deed, it will be written as one, not ten. And if you ask Allah to forgive, Allah will forgive you. Listen to the Qudusi Hadith when Allah said, فَإِذَا آتَأَتَانِي لَيْلًا قَبِلْتُ وَإِنْ آتَانِي نَهَارًا قَبِلْتُ وَإِنْ آتَانِي يَمْشِي أَتَيْتُهُ هَرْوَهُ 
If you came to Allah at night, He will accept you. If you will came to Allah and repented to Him in the morning, He would accept you. If you came to Allah walking, He will come to you running. Means what? Allah wants you to go back to Him. Allah loves you to call Him. Allah loves you to repent to Him. Allah loves you to make a dua, to say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Sometimes we think if we make a dua, no, Allah will not accept. Listen, He will accept. He wants you to make a dua. He promised you to accept your dua. Allah is always Rahim. Allah is always forgiven. Allah is always merciful. He only needs you to come to Him. He called me. He called you. He called those who went transgressors, those who passed the limit, those who committed sins, those who disobeyed Him. Allah said, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقَنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Oh my dear servants who went transgressors upon themselves, who committed sins, who passed the limit, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Allah is calling me, He's calling you. You will find Him always merciful. You need only to go back to Allah with a sincere heart. Raise your hand, supplicate to Him, make a dua, call Him out. You do not need a mediator between you and Allah. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my servants ask you about me, I am near to them. I am close to them. You do not need to have a mediator between you and Allah. You do not need to go to a human being to confess, to admit your sins in front of a human being. But you directly to Allah, when you make a dua and you say, Ya Rabb, Allah will say, Labbayka abdi. Oh my servant, I am here listening to you. You can pray. You can make sujood. You can make that dua to Allah. And listen. I was thinking a lot about sharing that narration with you, that specific hadith. Because some people might think, okay, if that is the case, let me commit more sins. But I will tell you this hadith. I will give that message to those who undermining underestimating the mercy of Allah. And for those who committed too much of sins and the shaitan came to their minds and told, told them, you know what, Allah would never listen to you. There is no way to come back to Allah. Please do not listen to the shaitan. And listen to the hadith of Rasulullah. And I want you to listen to this hadith not only by your ears, but I want you to listen to this hadith by your heart. And this hadith is muttafaqun alayh, agreed upon. The classification, it is agreed upon. It is in the highest classification of authenticity. It is mentioned in both. Bukhari and Muslim. 
narrated by Abu Hurairah, a man from Bani Israel, from the children of Israel, from the time of Musa alayhi salam, a man who committed two many sins. Some narration said he never done a good deed. He never done one single good deed in his life. So that man was so bad. So when he came to die on his deathbed, he brought all his children and he said, listen, I have done no good deed in my life. And I believe that there is Allah. I'm afraid to meet with Him. So my will, my last instructions to you, when I die, burn me. Burn my body. And then get my ashes. لَيُعَذِّبْنِي عَذَابًا مَا عَذَّبَهُ أَحَدٍ If Allah is able to bring me together, He would punish me a certain or a specific punishment that no one ever could have ever. He is afraid of the punishment of Allah. When He died, they burnt him. They did the same. They scattered his ashes everywhere. And Allah wanted to bring him together. Allah is able to do everything. Allah said, Kun, be. And he stood before Allah. Allah brought him together. Then Allah asked him, "Ma hamalaka ala ma sanat?" What made you to think that way? To be burnt after your death? To let them scatter your ashes? He said, "Oh Allah, I was afraid of you. I was afraid of your punishment." So Allah said to the angels, He didn't know my mercy. He didn't understand how merciful I am. And Allah said to him, My servant, today I'll forgive you. Take him to Jannah. Just think about this. Think about this. Do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Just go back. Just declare your repentance. Admit your sins. Acknowledge your mistakes. Acknowledge your shortcomings. Say, Ya Allah, forgive me. And He will forgive you. May Allah accept our repentance. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah. الحمد لله وكفى وصلاة وسلاما على النبي المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم My brothers and sisters in Islam I just wanted before we move to the salah to give that message to all of us We are the seekers of the mercy of Allah But you know what? How come you ask Allah to shower you with your mercy if you cannot show mercy to others. Like some people might have clashes, conflicts with others and they decide to disconnect themselves from their family members, from their relatives, from their kinship. And at the same time, 
they ask and they say, Oh Allah, forgive me. And I wonder, if you cannot forgive your brother, how come you are expecting Allah to forgive you? The mercy of Allah is given to those who are living with mercy, to those who are sharing mercy, to those who are showering others with mercy, to those who are showing mercy to others. How come you wanted the mercy of Allah to encompass you while you cannot shower mercy or show mercy to your neighbor, to your brother, to your mother, to your father? How many children, how many sons and daughters, they do not show mercy to their parents. They left their parents in the nursing homes without even come and check on them. <coughs> they, they just come on holidays. They just come as tradition. That is not part of Islam. How come you ask Allah to give you His mercy? Why you do not show that mercy to your own father, to your own mother, to check on them, to take care of them, to show them your love, your mercy. You know in Islam, showing mercy to the animals is an act of worship. You will be rewarded. You will be rewarded when you show that mercy to the animals. You know the famous story for the woman who disobeyed Allah a lot. And one day she saw a dog so thirsty. She went to the well. She got on her, on her leather socks some water to give the sip of water to the dog because the dog was so thirsty and Allah forgave all her sins because of the sip of water to the dog. Think about this. Showing mercy to the animals what about showing mercy to your own wife, to your own children? If showing mercy to the animals, not only this, let me give you more. Rasulullah Muhammad showed the mercy to the trunk of a palm tree when he was given the khutbah of the trunk of a palm tree and they made a special member to him. The first khutbah, he heard the palm tree, the trunk is crying. He stopped his khutbah. He went down. He hugged the trunk of the palm tree and he tapped on it and he said, if I didn't do this, it would still cry till the day of judgment. He showed the mercy to the camel when he seen the, the, the tears in the eyes of the camel. Then he asked, who is the owner of this camel? They said so and so. He said, bring him. When he came, he said, why are you giving hard time to this camel? Why are you making him to carry heavy weight? And he said, Be'ahuli, let me buy this camel from you. He gave him the money. And he said to the camel, Go, you are free, take rest. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, showed the mercy to the animals to the camels, to his family. 
He said, the best one amongst you, the one who is doing good to his own family. So please, think about this. If you wanted Allah to shower you with his mercy in the dunya and in the hereafter, be good to everyone. Show mercy to every human being. Show, show mercy, show mercy to the animals. Be kind, be merciful, be gentle, be nice. And you know what? In these moments, while I'm talking today about mercy, unfortunately, we have human beings, they have no mercy in their hearts. I feel painful, I feel sad when we are talking here about mercy while we have people in Palestine, in Gaza, they are killing children, they are killing women, they are killing innocent, they are killing civilians, harming their houses, cut them into pieces with no mercy. And I'm wondering, where is the mercy in the hearts of those people? We are talking here about mercy while we have people in the media, some people in the authority, some people in the positions like decision makers. They call them animals. They call them, kill them, destroy them. Where is the mercy in the hearts of those people? When you see a man, the whole family like got the rocket in the house and it cut them into pieces. I have seen that. The man lost in one minute by the rocket. He, he lost more than eight members of his family. And we have seen the videos while he is collecting the pieces of his children in one plastic bag. Think about this. Where is the mercy in the hearts of those people? Why Allah took the mercy out of their hearts? Because of what? Because of what they killed the children. Because of what they killed women. More than 40,000 were killed. And more than 100,000 were injured. And still you have hundreds of people under the rubbles. They are not discovered yet. Please. Remember them in your dua. Do not forget your brothers and sisters in Islam. And make a dua. When you see those people and their hearts are full of hatred, actually, they are not part of that mercy. They are not part of the mercy of Allah. Make a dua for your brothers and sisters. And please, do not let these scenes to take the mercy out of your heart. We will still the nation of the mercy. We will continue calling for mercy. We will continue calling for love. Love will win. Mercy will win. Yes, we feel pain in our hearts, but as Allah had promised us, 
وما النصر إلا من عند الله إن تنصر الله ينصركم when you show that mercy when you take the reasons of the victory Allah will grant you victory stay kind stay merciful stay gentle stay nice spread Islam everywhere be proud of your identity and say my hope is Allah the one who is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim may Allah forgive us all may Allah shower all of us with his mercy may Allah protect us all may Allah give victory to our brothers and sisters may Allah accept their martyrs Allahumma ameen may Allah give cure and healing for everyone is suffering on this earth may Allah give cure and healing for everyone might suffer pain or calamity Allahumma ameen Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina Allahumma ansur al-islam wa izz al-muslimin Allahumma a'li bi fadlika kalimatay al-haq wa al-deen Allahumma ansur ikhwadana fi kulusqeen Allahumma thabbit aqdamahum Allahumma wahid sabbahum wajma' kalimatahum wa habibuhum ila ba'dihim ya rabb al-alamin Allahumma anza' al-baghda' min baynihim wa wahid sabbahum اللهم وحد صفهم واجمع كلمتهم وقوع عزائمهم وثبت الأرض من تحت أقدامهم إنك على كل شيء قدير أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وأقم الصلاة قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم